Dr. Nguyen. Thank you, Madam Chair. For the record, my name is Sun Nguyen, a uh, Joe Science uh, Specialist with the CNSC. Uh, before I talk about model, I have to put it in the context of the safety case. Again, uh, models are used in the safety assessment, which is a, an important component of the safety case, but it's not the only component where you, uh, on which you, you would rely in order to make a decision about uh, a case about the safety of, of a deep geological repository or any type of waste management uh, system. Uh, so uh, the safety assessment has to be complemented by additional arguments such as the uh, site characteristics, uh, for example, the, the favorable characteristic like uh, the stability of, uh, of the rock formation, both from a geochemical, uh, hydrogeological, and, and geological point of view for very long periods of time. Those are indicators which give additional arguments uh, in the confidence of for long-term safety. Uh, you have to take those into account. The design of the facility, the waste characteristics are also important components uh, that would support the safety case. Now, the safety assessment in itself is an important component of, uh, of, uh, of the safety case. We have to recognize that. And it is, a, uh, well, I have to uh, redefine it again. Uh, uh, the, uh, the safety uh, assessment is a um, systematic analysis of the impact of the, the facility on humans and the environment. So because it's systematic, usually we use a quantitative analysis in order to do so. Uh, so quantitative analysis requires the use of models. That's where models go into uh, play in the overall development of the, the safety case. Um, so the, the processes that, that govern the, the migration of contaminants from, from the repository back to the biosphere are very complex and they're numerous. You, uh, you cannot include all the processes in any type of models, so expert judgment is required in order to identify the main processes that would uh, govern in the movement of contaminant from uh, contaminants from, from the uh, repository back to the biosphere, and also the processes that would influence that, uh, that, uh, that movement. So in other words, uh, you need professional judgment in order to conceptualize a system. So that's what we call a conceptual model. Now, the conceptual model of the most important processes are translated into mathematical equations, which are called the governing equations of the model. So this is the mathematical model. And those mathematical models are, uh, are solved using, uh, using, in general, computers. You can do things uh, uh, back of the envelope calculation and this kind of thing. But uh, in most cases, the, uh, the, 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 it's, it's, uh, the equations are solved uh, numerically using computers. And then this is what we call the, uh, the a computer model. But in short, usually people just lump everything together and they call it the mathematical model of the, of the waste management system. Uh, in safety assessment, in particular for, for the, uh, the deep uh, geological repository here yeah, for the OPG DGR, uh, there are two types of uh, assessment models which are being used. So the more detailed mechanistic models that we are talking about. So those models, they, they try to include as many processes as possible into the, into the, uh, in, into the equations in order to, to be as close as, uh, to, to reality as possible. But it's not, they are not used for to determine the, the uh, overall, uh, usually the, well, the, the second type of, of model are the process model. So uh, the processes are, uh, the system models uh, where the, the processes are simplified. Uh, and this, this type of model, the system models are the ones uh, which are being used to determine the, uh, the bounds of the impacts on the environment and on humans. For example, OPG used the, uh, the coat amber uh, in order to solve this equation. So this is the example of a system model. Uh, for more uh, detailed mechanistic models, you can look at, uh, uh, for example, uh, models that, de that determine the geomechanical system in three dimension, the hydrogeological system in three dimension, and the contaminant transport uh, uh, um, processes in, in three dimension with the exact, the close to uh, exact rep um, 
representation of the, the real world, uh, geosphere and the repository. Uh, you have other models that looks at uh, the, the migration of gas process, the generation and migration of gas. So those are um, the, uh, the detailed models which are used in order to support the assumptions and the simplification uh, of the uh, of the uh, the system model, like uh, like Amber. Uh, so those the, those things uh, work together and they combine together. So sometimes. Um, uh, the uh, the uh, the more detailed model I also use in order to uh, to um, verify the uh, the assumption of different ev evolution scenarios which are uh, used in the uh, in the system model calculations. Right. Um, there need to uh, we have to say that uh, models uh, which are used in safety assessment are not prediction tools. They're not we're not doing predictions. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, the, the, the models tend to um, uh, aim to provide a bound of the impact, of the possible impact using conservative assumptions. So those are not predictions. Nobody can predict uh, things which, you know, the impact which is going to happen in one million years. This is something that has to be recognized. But there is uh, enough, uh, uh, if the, the, the modeling tools uh, are used with confidence. If you develop confidence in the the, the modeling tools that you are using, uh, you can say with confidence that you know we we have properly bounded the impact by using tools which have been verified, uh, calibrated, and validated. So those are different jargons used in in the the modeling business as well. So verification really is is uh, uh, is the uh, the the way to uh, to ensure that the codes uh, used in the computer models uh, are functioning properly. So uh, there are different ways to do uh, verification. For example, if you have an analytical solution to the same problem, you can compare the, the, re the analytical solution to the results of the computer codes. You can do a benchmark, code-to-code uh, -code comparison, and there are different international uh, uh, projects, cooperative projects, where people uh, are given the same uh, problem and then they run codes, different codes differently and they compare the results at the, at the end. So those are benchmark problems used in verification activities. Now calibration is the, uh, when you have um, experimental data or monitoring data for a certain period of time and you, you use the model in order to match the experimental data to the, to, uh, to the, uh, the results of, of the, the uh, computer models. This is calibration. Now, there's also validation. This is, this is the only instance where you can claim to make some prediction. So validation are an exercise where you have an, a short or longer term experiment, which can last for 10 years, or, and then you try to predict the outcome, the, the results of the experiments by uh, running your, your code and then comparing your, your prediction at the end. But again, those are based on uh, short or long-term experiments which can last the, their case or, whether, or, or maybe more if possible. But uh, it is not possible to do prediction for, for one million years. This is something which is given, which is accepted by the, uh, the modeling community. Uh, so uh, in other words, models, mo models are used to, to give uh, bounds. Uh, uh, estimate, uh, you know, bounded estimate using conservative assumption for what uh, impact would be for, for in the very long term. And uh, despite the, uh, the confidence building that I just explained and the conservativeness and all these uh, other things, uh, you still have to complement the, the results of the safety assessment with additional arguments such as uh, paleohydrogeological information, uh, geo geological stability, uh, a robust design of your facility, and other things like the waste characteristics uh, compared to, uh, you know, uh, like uh, background uh, material, back background radioactivity or radioactivity of uh, other ores, uh, other um, uranium ore mines, or uh, use uh, natural analogs to uh, 
to provide additional arguments in support of your conclusions. Thank you very much, Dr. Nguyen.